in this part we'll go into the SMS activation flow. The first form in the SMS activation flow is the enter mobile number form. It's a simple form even though there are some interesting subtle features here. The cool thing is that we did almost all of the work for this element already. Let's jump right into the code that makes that form. We'll use standard back navigation since the toolbar is pretty standard here. The phone number text field is right next to the country code button. We place it in the center of the border layout so it will take up all available space. I want the padding on the text field and button to match so they align properly. Once paddings are set, they are always in pixels, so we need to change the style to use pixels. I don't want to impact the left-right padding values, so I extract them first and save them so I can restore them into the UI. I could technically create a separate UI ID to align both, but I wanted to do this in the code so future changes to the theme don't break alignment. Just so you'll get a sense of why this exists, this screenshot shows side by side how this looks with and without the alignment code. Guess which is the right one? You can start editing a text field by invoking Start Editing. However, this is a bit more challenging to do with a form that isn't showing yet, so we have a special case for that. Set edit on show. And this is pretty much it for this form. Once the number is entered, we move to the SMS verification stage or password entry stage. In this case, I've hard coded the SMS verification stage. I didn't do the SMS resend countdown, but I did do the number input. Notice that the text fields look like Android text fields, but have a sort of center alignment structure. Also notice that the error mode spans the four text elements. Let's jump into the code and look at how this was done. The enter SMS verification digits form is a bit of a mouthful, but it describes the function of the form rather well. Let's go over this form line by line. We use a border layout and place a box in the center, which we make scrollable on the Y axis. The reason for the border layout is so we can stick the countdown label in the south. Otherwise, I would have used box layout for the entire form. Notice I set the container to be scrollable on the Y axis. This is important for containers where we have text input. It allows our keyboard code to resize the container properly when the keyboard shows. I'd like to also po point out that I used the standard back command in the toolbar. We create an array of text fields to loop over. This allows us to easily change the code to accept six digits. I'll discuss the create digits method soon. Yes, this works. It adds all the components in the array, so it will add the four digit text fields. The error label is always there. We just hide it. For now, I don't animate the recent text. Again, notice that I use border layout to position the recent label at the bottom and place the rest of the stuff in a box layout in the center. When the floating action button is pressed, we validate the input so we can decide whether to show an error or proceed. The generic creation code creates the array of numeric text fields and aligns the hints to the center. This logic makes sure that once we type a character, the input will automatically move to the next text field. In case of an error, we just change the underlying style. 
We could have also done this by invoking set UI ID, which might have been more elegant. We bind a listener to each text field, and if the length of the text is 1, we stop editing and move to the next text field. And this is pretty much it, with the exception of the styles we had to add to make this happen. The digit style is a special case of text field, specifically designed for this form. The main reason for a special style is the problematic center alignment in text field. Because of the way this works, I preferred using a 1mm padding on the sides to give the feel of center alignment in this case. Center alignment works in text area, label, etc. However, it's flaky in text fields because it's really hard to get the position right when moving from lightweight to native editing. Another important bit is the smaller margin that makes the fields stand closer to one another. As I mentioned before, since this is a specialization of text field, we derive from text field, the text field class. One thing to notice is that the selected style, we need to override the border as well to implement a 4 pixel underline border. It's because we derived from the unselected digit and not from the selected version of text field. So we need to redefine how selected digit entry looks. However, we also override the font size to make it slightly smaller and thus more consistent with the native Uber app. The error label is just a red on white label. It has a bit of a smaller padding so it can use up space. It still has zero margin like most components but it has a smaller light font at 2.8 millimeters, which is more consistent with the material design aesthetic. The recent code style just pads the text so it will align properly with the floating action button. It leaves margin as zero by default, but it has smaller text size than a typical label. The last form in the SMS activation flow is the password entry form. It's a trivial form after the others we've been through. Here I'll gloss over it relatively quickly. This is the entire form code, literally in one page. After the activation uh, form, there is literally nothing new or interesting here. The only aspect that's here and wasn't there is the forget password UI ID, which we align with the floating action button. In this case, we have two elements that we enclose in a box layout Y in the south. Most of the work here is in the UI ID itself. The forget password buttons have a bluish color and are transparent. The padding is carefully measured to align properly with the floating action button. Margin is zero as usual. The font is a relatively small 2.5 millimeter size. And that concludes the SMS activation UI flow mockup.